you guys did your little activity and you found that the angles were all the same and the um, figure one divided by figure two was around 1.4 or 1.3 or something like that. So the reason those are off a little bit is because of the human eye. So the human eye is going to be off a little bit as you measure. So some of you guys might have had different measurements. Like I know some of you guys said 28, but some of you said 29 for figure one. Um, so you could be off just a little tiny bit. Um, the bigger those figures get, like imagine if I had like a quadrilateral filling this whole room, right, and I was using millimeters, that would be pretty darn accurate. Okay, so the bigger the pictures get, the more accurate you are. Okay, so similar polygons are two polygons such that, that their angles are congruent to each other. So the angles are the same measurement. But then the sides aren't the same. Okay, so that would be congruent figures if the, if the sides were the same. So what do you think we're going to say for the sides? The sides are um, in the same proportion. Let's say that. So the sides are in the same proportion. Or same ratio, I'll say. Proportion is an equation, so we'll say in the same ratio. And the symbol for similar to is this little squiggle. So not with the equal sign underneath, that would be congruent. Okay, so statement of proportionality. So an extended equation that relates all of the equal ratios in a polygon. So for instance, if we said that x, y, z is equal to, or is similar to triangle V, U, W, we would have this following statement of proportionality. So we'd say that x, y divided by V, U is equal to y, z divided by U, W. Do you see where I'm getting this? So I did x and y, and I did y and z. What do you think I'm going to do next? xz. So xz over what? Yep, perfect. Makes sense. So you're saying 1 divided by the other triangle, 1 divided by the other triangle. They're all in the same ratio. You would also have that angle x is congruent to angle v. Angle y is congruent to angle u and angle Z is congruent to angle W. Okay, so the statement of proportionality is this part right here, statement of proportionality. So number one, so it says write the statement of proportionality and list all pairs of congruent angles for the following similar polygons. Okay, so you kind of have to imagine rotating it so that it's on top of it. Do you see how A, E is matching up with this one here? The Z, W. You guys get it? So let's say I start with A and I go around. So I do A, B, C, D, E. What's it going to be similar to? Looks like W, V, X, Y, Z. So our congruent angles, we're going to have angle A is congruent to angle W, angle B is congruent to angle V, etc. You guys get that right. You have to do all this. And then the statement of proportionality, that's where you say like AB divided by WV is equal to, so that was this first segment, first segment. Then you'd say second segment, so you'd say BC over VX equals, so BC over VX. And you'd say CD over XY, DE over um, YZ, and the last one EA over ZW. Okay, that's all of them. So you could say other segments, like you could talk about segment like EC, and you could say, oh, that's in the same proportion as, uh, I don't know which one it is, Z. X, like you could say those, but those aren't really like sides of the polygon, right? So we're not worried about those ones. So you should only have five sides if you have a five, if you have a pentagon. All right, making sense so far? Pretty easy. All right, so it says, decide if the quadrilaterals on the right are similar. If so, write a similarity statement. Okay, so it looks like all of their angles match up, but what about their sides? So if I take the 12 and the 4, it looks like those two would match up. So 12 over 4. That's going to be the same as 7 over, not 7 over. What do I need to do first? I need to do the other one right. So A over 7. So what do you think A is? 21. Yep. You guys see it? Because it's in 3 to 1, 3 to 1. So what's B have to be? So it says, what kind of quadrilateral is this? 
So going back to chapter 6, it's not a rectangle. It looks like it, right? But we have to do these different congruence marks. Like this could be like 89 degrees and 91 degrees. What would it be if this was 89 degrees and 91 degrees? It's a parallelogram, right? So it's a parallelogram. So don't assume that it's a rectangle without those right angles. Um, so if it's parallelogram, then isn't B the same thing? It should also be 21 because opposite sides are parallel. So it's a parallelogram. Make sense? All right, so in the diagram, measure of angle B is equal to a measure of angle F, which is 90. So what two quadrilaterals do I have here? I have two trapezoids. Do you guys see it? So if so, write a similarity statement. So we need to decide if these are similar to each other. So do we think that they're similar? So I think since those are both 90 degrees, that these two lines are parallel to each other. Could we say that? Yeah. So that means that this angle and this angle are the same. And it means that this angle and this angle are the same. So I think the quadrilaterals are similar because the two trapezoids the big, huge trapezoid and the smaller trapezoid, they have the same angles, right? And not only do they have the same angles, but let's see if they're in that same proportion to one another. So we have 14 and we have 10. So 14 over 10 works out to be 1.4. I guess I can't really say if they're similar to each other. I don't have another one to prove that they are, but let's assume that they're similar to each other. So then let's find, let's say, x. So if I want to find x, I would then do 15 over x, right? Do you guys see it? So big over tiny equals big over tiny. And then we solve it out. So we say 150 divided by 14. So we get x equals um, 10.714. That's this measurement. Do you guys see how I got that? Okay, how would I set up something to find y? I would still use my 14 over 10 because that's the ratio of the two triangles, or the two trapezoids. Why did I say 14? Why didn't you stop at me? It's 24 to 10. You should have stopped me. I usually give bonus points to people for corrections, but I haven't done that with summer geometry. I should. So hang on. So this is not 10 point. So this is 150 divided by 24. So 6.25, I was wondering why I gave myself such a weird number with that other one. Okay, so 6.25, so I have 24 over 10. Do you guys see where I'm getting the 24? This whole thing here is 24. So 24 over 10 equals, so if I want to get y, what's it match up with? Well, 16, right? So we're going to say 16 over y. So I got y is 6.6 .6 repeating. And then you can find z the same way. Does that make sense? So you can say 24 over 10 equals, and z is here, so we're going to say 12 over z. So I think z is 5. Okay, does that make sense? So a scale factor is the ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides. So the scale factor for the last one, it was 24 to 10, which reduced down to 12 to 5. That was our scale factor. Okay, so it's in the ratio of 12 to 5. Does that make sense? All right, so scale factors. So it says you've been asked to create a poster advertising a school field trip to the Indianapolis Zoo. You take a photograph of the largest elephant, Sophie, which you would like to enlarge to poster size. Your photograph is um, 4 by 6. You want it to be um, 20 inches. So how wide will the poster be? So we're saying 4 inches wide by 6 inches long. So this is the width. This is the length. So if we want the length to be 20, we want to know what the width would be. So let's put a W. Okay, so it's going to be a decimal. So we're going to cross multiply. I get 4 times 20 is 80 equals 6w. So I take 80 divided by 6. And I get w is equal to 13 and 1 third. So 13.3 repeating. So it says, what is the scale factor? Well, what are the two lengths that we knew? We knew that we wanted to go from 6 inches. We wanted to go to 20 inches. So that reduces down to 3 to 10. So it's in a ratio of 3 to 10. What are the perimeters of the photograph and poster? So this is going to show us something that's uh, 
interesting about geometry. So what are the parameters of the photograph and the poster? So if I have the photo and the poster, the photo was a 4 by 6, and the poster was, what, 13.3 repeating by 20? So the perimeter of the photo and the perimeter of the poster, we want to find both of them. So our perimeter of our photo, do you guys know that one? That's pretty easy. What is it? 20, yeah. The perimeter of the poster is a little bit harder because we have this 13.3 repeating thing going on. So I'm going to add it to itself or multiply by 2, basically. And then add on 40 because 20 and 20. So I get 66.6 .6 repeating. So this scale factor, I would still do 20 divided by that 66.6 .6 repeating, and I get 0.3, which is the same as 3 tenths, right? So the perimeter has the same scale factor. Do we think the area will have the same scale factor? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 4 to 6, and then, what are you saying? You get it? Okay, so what are the areas of the photo, photograph and poster? So the area of this one was 24, right? Because it was 4 and 6. So this one was 13.3 repeating and 20. If you want 13.3 repeating, you can do 1 third on your calculator, and then plus 13. And then if I multiply by that 20... I get 266.6 .6 repeating. So do we think these two areas, the 24 and 266.6 .6 repeating, are they still in the ratio of 3 to 10? No. So let's see. So if I take 24 divided by my answer, the 266.6 .6 repeating, I get 0 0.09. Which written as a decimal, or as a fraction, is 9 over 100. How does that compare to this? 3 over 10, 9 over 100. It is. It's squared. Right? The top squared, the bottom squared. Do you guys see how 3 squared makes 9, 10 squared makes 100? So it's squared. Yeah. So that's what it says here. So it says a theorem about perimeter and area ratios. So it says if two polygons are similar and their side length is in the ratio of x to y, their perimeters are still in the ratio of x to y. It's the same ratio. So if I had like 2 to 5, it's still 2 to 5. But for areas, if I had x to y for their side lengths, then their areas end up being x squared to y squared for the scale factor. So it's kind of weird. So it says think about squares with a side length of 1, a side length of 2, and a side length of 3. Okay, so this is going to be kind of weird. But let's think about the units. So if I had a, a 1 by 1 by 1 by 1, what's the perimeter of this one? 4, right? How about the next one? Eight, right? And then this next one? Twelve, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about like uh, this rectangle or this square to this square. Its ratio is one to three. Do we all see this? Everybody look up here. Can you guys see how this is one to three? Aren't the parameters still in the ratio of one to three? Four to twelve, is that one to three? Yeah. So the parameters are the same. But then what happens with the area? Well, our area of the first one is 1. The area of the second one is what? 4. And the area of the last one is 9. So if I take these that were in the ratio of 1 to 3, right? What about their areas? Their areas are 1 to 9. Does that make sense? Or if I look at, let's say, these blue ones. These were in the ratio of 2 to 3. Well, their areas are in the ratio of 4 to 9. Does this make sense? Okay, the reason is because the inches was being squared. So think about, like, filling this space. Do you guys see how there was one here, but now there's four in there? It's like an inch and an inch. You have to think about the dimensions going around. So going around something, if I'm counting the perimeter, that's still in, like, inches, right? But if I'm talking about the area of something, my units are inches squared. Okay, so going around is still just the same units inches. What do you guys think about volume? Like, what if I made this bigger and it went out like that? What do you think the volumes would be? <laughs> It'd 
be 1 by 1 by 1, which is 1. The volume of this one would be 2 by 2 by 2, which is 8, 2 cubed. And the last one would be 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Those would be like 1 to 27. So the original 1 to 3 now goes to 1 to 27. So you cube both things. Does that make sense? So that's our relationship. Okay, so it says the following similar polygons have a scale factor of 7 to 10. So if we have 7 to 10, what is the perimeter of polygon 2? So perimeter also has, so will also be 7 to 10. So when we're talking about perimeter, it's the same. So we don't have to find each individual thing. You don't have to say, okay, well, I'm going to multiply this one. Um, so I'm going to put like a 6 here and an X here. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to put like a 6 here and an X here to find what this length is or whatever. I don't know where it is, <laughs> whatever length that is. I don't need to find each individual length. All I need to do is find this perimeter. So I add these numbers up. So I'm like, okay, I got 6, 7, 8, and 6.5. So when I add those together, I get 27.5. That's the smaller polygon, 27.5. The bigger one we don't know. So I'm going to put P. And I just solve it out. It has to be in that ratio of 7 to 10. So when I divide it out, I get my perimeter has to be 39.286. Inches. So I cross multiplied and then divided by 7. So number two, the figures in each pair are similar. Compare the first figure to the second figure. Give the ratio of the perimeters and the ratio of their areas. So what ratio are these in? So the original problem, so their sides are in what ratio? Yeah, it's like 14 to 21, which he's realizing uh, divides out by 7, so it is in the ratio of 2 to 3. So what about our perimeters? They're also 2 to 3. What about the areas? Not 2 to 3. What do we do? We square both of them. Since they're being 2 to 3, it's going to be 4 to 9. You guys see that? You guys get that pattern there. So perimeters are the same, areas are squared. Okay, so the area of the larger triangle is given, find the area of the smaller triangle. So if we have 16 to 12, that's the side lengths, right? Our areas are in the ratio of 16 squared to 12 squared, which is 256 over 144. Okay, so we have to use that area um, ratio, that scale factor of the areas, right? So we're going to say 256 over 144 equals another fraction. And we have the area of the larger triangle. So do I put the larger on the top or do I put it on the bottom? Which one's the bigger number? The one we got on the top, right? So I'm going to put the bigger number up on the top. So we're going to say it's 105 divided by that other area, area of the smaller. Does that make sense? And we cross multiply. So I'm going to take that 144 times 105 equals 256 times the area. So now I divide by 256. So I get my area is 59, whoops, oh, that's kind of messy, 59.0625. Does that make sense? Do you guys get that? Okay, I'm going to stop there. Do we feel pretty good about that section?